This is a summary of the 8C topic, lessons 4 and 5, electronic structure of the atom. First part we're going to look at is the basic structure of an atom. We've got the central nucleus, and in this example we've got seven subatomic particles. We've got three shaded ones, these are my protons, and one, two, three, four neutrons. The protons have a positive charge, and the neutrons have a neutral charge. Both of these together make up the nucleus of the atom. Surrounding the nucleus, we have what we call shells or energy levels, shell or energy levels, and we find the electrons in these energy levels. I've got two in my first shell, or the lowest energy level, and in this example, I've got one electron in the outer shell, or the highest energy level. The electrons that we find in the outer shell are called the valence electrons. If we then have a look at the nucleus in a bit more detail, we can work out the overall mass of the atom just by adding together the number of protons, 3, and the number of neutrons, 4. And in this example, we have a mass of 7. We don't include the electrons because these are so small, they don't contribute to the overall mass. They're very tiny compared to the protons and the neutrons. And just for reference, the electrons have a negative charge, which we will talk about a little bit later. We can also look at something else with the protons and the neutrons, because in the periodic table, we have information about all of the different elements. So I've used fluorine as an example, and we can calculate the number of neutrons that every atom has just by looking at the number of protons, which is sometimes called the atomic number, and in fluorine's case it's 9, and this is compared to the mass number, which is the protons and the neutrons together. So if we want to work out how many neutrons fluorine has, we simply work out the difference between the two numbers, and in this case it's 19 subtract 9, that means there are 10 neutrons in this atom. And this works for every element in the periodic table. Let's go back then to talking about the structure of the atom, and in particular now we're going to look at the significance of positive, neutral and negative charges. Every atom has an overall neutral charge, and the reason being is because in this example we've got three positive protons, I've got three negative electrons, three positives and three negatives, put those numbers together, we get an overall value of zero. So atoms are neutral. The neutrons make no difference to the overall charge because they have a neutral charge anyway. So how do you draw different atoms from different elements? Well, I'm going to go through an example, two examples with you. The first one is carbon. The first thing I can do is look at carbon in the periodic table and see that it's in period 2. So that means I need to draw two shells or energy levels. I also know it's in group 4, and that tells me there are 1, 2, 3, 4 valence electrons. The other thing I need to find out from the periodic table is what the proton number is. So this is the atomic number and the atomic number for carbon is 6. So if I've got my 4 in the outer shell, which I have to have because it's in group 4, the other 2 must fit into the inner shell. When drawing atoms we tend to work from the inside outwards, I'll show you on the next example, and again this is just the right way to represent the number of electrons in carbon atom and where they are. Let's look at another example, this time we've got aluminium, so we've got more electrons to deal with this time. To draw aluminium, first of all we need to know what, how many shells to draw, well we look at what period it's in, it's in period 3, so we draw 1, 2, 3 circles. Notice I haven't drawn the uh, nucleus this time, I've just written the letters of the, uh, of the element in the centre. I know that it's in group 3, so I can draw 3 electrons in the outer shell, and aluminium has 10 in total, sorry, 10 left, it's got 13 in total. So what I need to do is work out how do I fill the rest of this out. Well, we always start from the centre, or the inner shell, and work our way out, and the capacity of the inner shell is always 2. Once we've put the first 2 in, that's it full. We then have to go and fill up the next one. This second one here has a capacity of 8, so once I've put all 8 in, that actually only leaves me three left over, and that matches the group number anyway. So the order that we fill up the shells, or the capacity of each shell, is always two, 
8 and 8 and we always feel from the inside outwards and there's a couple of checks that you can do just make sure that the number on the outer shell matches the group number and you should be able to draw um, lots and lots of different atoms and this this rule sort of works for the first 20. Final thing we're going to look at is how we actually count atoms. Now, atoms are too tiny to count by themselves. We can't pick them up individually and say, well, there's one, two, ten. We couldn't count them every hundred, and we can't count them in thousands or millions even. They're still too small to do that. So let's look at a more realistic version of how you might count something really small. How do you count grains of rice? Well, say you're a company that wanted to bag up grains of rice to sell to customers, and you wanted 10,000 grains per bag. You wouldn't necessarily build a machine that counts 10,000 grains, or you wouldn't employ somebody to do it. So what we do is we simply measure the mass of one grain of rice. If you know how much one uh, grain of rice weighs, then multiply that number by 10,000, and then you know how much a bag should weigh. That's it. So we can do the same with atoms. Instead of wanting 10,000, though, we count atoms in a huge number. It's a really, really long number. It's actually a six with 23 zeros on the end of it. And there's a special name for that number, and it's called a mole. So it's like a pair is worth two, a dozen is worth 12, you might say a grand is a thousand. We have certain names for certain numbers, and this one is called a mole. It's a six with 23 zeros on the end of it. And all we do, we just need to know the mass of one atom, and we multiply it by this number, and that tells us how many grams you need to weigh out of a particular atom. And that's how we do it. Right, there's your overall summary of topic 8C, lessons 4 and 5, the electronic structure of the atom.